Love the Lord your God, based on Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34, key verses, chapter 12, verse 30. Let's read it all together. Ready? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Nochmal auf Deutsch. Und du sollst den Herrn deinen Gott lieben von ganzem Herzen, von ganzem Seele, let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jesus who came to this world and gave his life as a ransom for many. Thank you for his calling for his disciples. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Thank you for his hope and his vision for saving the world through disciples raising them as shepherds for the crowd. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me, a sick sinner, calling me as your disciple, and for giving me your shepherd training and helping me to learn your servant leadership little by little. Thank you for giving us this GLC, now in Rehe. Thank you for the opportunity to focus on learning Jesus' servant leadership in Mark's gospel. Thank you for all the messengers that have gone before me and all that will come. Thank you for using us as instruments of your word by the help of your Holy Spirit. Father, I ask that you continue to reveal this Jesus to us so that we may learn from Jesus and grow as servant leaders for our generation. Father, I ask that uh, this time, you may help me to be used as an instrument of your word. Amen. Help me to love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. And love my neighbor as myself. May you be revealed and glorified through this message. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> so thank God for giving us this time to study Mark's gospel intensively with a focus on Jesus. In this passage, we learn the core of Jesus' spiritual leadership through a dialogue with the teacher of the law. Many religious leaders came to Jesus with critical questions, intending to undermine him. Then came this teacher of the law. He was impressed by Jesus' wisdom and spiritual authority. So we asked him a, great, a question of great personal weight. Of all the commandments, which is the most important? Can you hear the sincerity in this question? Please, tell me, so that I may know how to live. I believe there are young men and women here at this conference who came with such a sincere question. Jesus. What is the most important commandment? What do you say about how man can live? Jesus' answer was so impressive to the man that he accepted it immediately. He said, well said, teacher, you are right. Wow, have you ever heard of such an, uh, such an answer to a question of such importance, so unconditionally? What wisdom and authority must be contained in Jesus' response? Let's think about Jesus' answer in three parts. First, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Let's read verse 29 together. Ready? The most important one answered Jesus, who says, Praise you, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus prefaces his response with this declaration from Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. His answer to the question about what commands to obey begins with whom to obey. Jesus says there is one true God. He is, for Israel, the Lord our God. Here Jesus reveals that God is a God with a personal and historic relationship with the people of Israel. 
The God of Israel is the God who chose Israel, saved her, and made a covenant with her. This God is the one God, not only of Israel, but of all creation and of all history. And he orchestrated all human and natural history for his purpose. The God of Israel is the God who sent Jesus Christ to fulfill his salvation purpose. John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. In Jesus, this God reconciled us Gentiles to him. Now, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, is also for us. Our God is the faithful, sovereign, and gracious God. This is the God whose commandment is the most important. We tend to think that leadership is about how to make other people obey. But leadership begins with knowing whom I must obey. Everywhere we are under pressure of commandments, pushing and pulling us. The commandments of the gods of money, entertainment, love, and physical pleasure oppress us and the people around us, our societies and nations. How can we lead spiritually in such an environment? We need confidence in who the one true God is. People think relativism regarding the truth of God is the free and good way to live. I can have my God, you can have your God, and we are free to fashion our own gods according to our liking. But when we do not know who the one true God is, we in fact become weak and dead in spirit. We have no self-confidence, and we are full of inner fear. We can't even lead our own lives, let alone lead others. Let us be people with confidence that the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Second, love the Lord your God with your all. So what is the most important commandment from this God? Let's read the answer in verse 30. Love the Lord your God. Ready? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Deutsch. Are you ready? Und los, dein Herr, dein Gott, und du nimmst von ganzem Herzen, von ganzem Seelen, von ganzem Gewicht, von all deiner Kraft. God commands total love. How many times is the word all written here? Or ganz? How many times, Josua Enzo? How many times could you observe? Nicht dreimal. Oh, auf Englisch, four times. Firma. I'm sorry, you were right. Four times of, of English. The totality of God's command is emphasized also by its comprehensive scope. All your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. In fact, this is the meaning of loving someone or something. To love means to serve or to worship, to give oneself unconditionally for someone or something. What or whom do you love? Many people live without an accurate knowledge of what they are really living how do you spend your time, your energy, your money, and materials? All of these things are easily trackable. You can find out what God you are really loving and serving. Are you serving money, career, recognition, romantic love, physical pleasures? No God but the one true God is the worthy and proper object of our love. This is the tragedy of our modern times and also of all of human history. We think that we are free when we rebel, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. 
But when we love any other God, we become slaves to sin. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace we have been saved. Only in loving this God, we can have life. Once I loved myself with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. When I loved human recognition and acceptance and my own control, I became a slave to anorexia, to deep fear and depression. I was trapped in darkness, and I was dead in my sins. But God saved me through Genesis 131a. Through loving this God, practically, wholly, rechanneling, rechanneling my thoughts, desires, and energy, from my obsession to memorizing and meditating on God's word, I was healed. Many people think that God demands too much and that this command is too extreme. Really, they ask, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength? Can't you just love God with a part of your mind? Shouldn't you save some room for yourself? So people think Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac, for example, is too extreme. Loving an unseen and unpopular God with practical sacrifice is considered crazy. My mother was the youngest daughter of a farming family in Korea. She studied hard and went to SNU, which is the Harvard of Korea, and she earned her master's degree. Her dream was to become a professor in French literature and to be a missionary to France. But she made the decision to love God with all her heart, soul, mind, and strength by going to Canada as a sewing machine operator missionary. In obedience to John chapter 114, the word became flesh. Her family, and especially her sister, who was also a romantic intellectual, thought she was crazy. People thought it was a pity and a waste. But it was not a waste, because the God she loves is the one true God. He saw and blessed her sacrifice and led her from rural Korea to downtown Toronto, where she worked in management positions in several large Canadian companies. She was blessed with the most faithful and humble husband, and two wonderful children, and one wonderful son-in-law, and many spiritual children. She is bearing fruit as a mother of nations and a spiritual leader in Canada. Consider the question, how can we be spiritual leaders today? We can either be spiritual zombies and followers, just going along with the crowd, loving the gods of money and physical pleasure and human recognition, just like everybody else, or we can be living fish in our times by loving the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Only then can we truly lead. Through my mother's crazy life, her parents and siblings and her children, including myself, and many Canadian students were led to saving faith in God. Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, verses 34 to 37, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? To love God is not a shameful waste or too risky. It is the best investment. I thank God for the young people who are here who want to love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength going against the trend of the world. These are people with ears to hear the secret of life. I thank God for Noah Schweitzer and Matthias Gregoriadis as promising young men they could pursue career fun, and girls. But they have faith in the Lord our God, and they want to love him with all their heart, 
soul, mind, and strength. Deny themselves. Right? All right? Amen. Can you see their great leadership potential? Yes, I believe such young men can receive the blessing of God, overcoming the sinful desires of youth, and growing as spiritual leaders for many. Amen. Third, love your neighbor as yourself. Let's read verse 31. Ready? The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. There can be no love for God without love for neighbor, and vice versa. There can be no love for neighbor without love for God. These days, Europe is inflamed with the issue of how to deal with refugees. At first, many people said that they wanted to welcome the refugees, and some even quoted, we must love our neighbors. But now, people are realizing that to love my neighbor as myself means I can't love myself <coughs> as myself. So instead of sacrificing themselves, they want to push the refugees out. Jesus challenged a rich young man who thought he was a nice and good guy. Go, sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But this rich young man couldn't do it, because he loved money, not God. So, he couldn't truly love his neighbor. This is the limitation of human goodness and love. Last week, Actually, a couple days ago, I went grocery shopping with Andrea Schweitzer. I bought too much, and we couldn't carry it all. A very kind woman saw us struggling, and she helped us. She was a Muslim. On the way home, she said, We live in such a selfish time. No one helps anyone else anymore. It's true. But we are commanded not only to help people here and there. We are commanded Love your neighbor as yourself. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Can you love one person to the point of giving your life for them, as Jesus did? In our times, the command, love your neighbor as yourself, is and should be the distinguishing characteristic of Christians. It is how we can be a witness of Jesus and a spiritual leader like Jesus. Love your neighbor as yourself is the second secret to spiritual leadership. John 12, verse 24 says, Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Jesus' sacrificial love is what made people follow him. Even though people in his time killed him, Jesus' sacrificial love to this day makes us follow him. Mission Dr. Peter Chang loved Germans with practical sacrifice by giving up his uh, career as a professor to devote himself to disciple making. That's why he could bear fruit, raising 12 house churches among German shepherds and his children and also raising his grandchildren and many others as spiritual leaders. This is a secret and witness. I repent that I was so self-centered that I couldn't love anyone as myself. I did only as much as felt comfortable within my limit. So I lived a fruitless life. But I thank God for bringing me here to Germany with the key verse of Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, my dear brothers, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. May I learn a life of practical, life-giving love, loving God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving my neighbor as myself. My closest neighbor is my husband. I want to love him and serve him as a suitable helper so that we may build up a shepherd house tree. Our neighbors are our co-workers, next gens, and students. May we learn how to work together in love, setting aside our own opinions, desires, and expectations. 
May we offer our time, energy, and materials to love our neighbors by serving them with one-to-one -one Bible study and life together. Thank God for teaching us through these words three secrets of Jesus' spiritual leadership. First, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Second, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Third, love your neighbor as yourself. Let us be spiritual leaders who lead by loving the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Let's finish by reading the key verse one more time. Uh, two times, actually, once in English and once in German. Are you ready? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Auf Deutsch. Und du sollst den Herrn, deinen Gott, die Schuld von deinem Herzen, von deiner Seele, von deinem Gemüt und von all deiner Kraft. Und wir finish with prayer. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the Lord our God, the Lord who is one. Thank you that you are the God who sent Jesus Christ as a ransom sacrifice for us. Thank you for teaching us today the highest commandment, to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Father, have mercy on us. Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus so that we can follow in his footsteps, living as people who love you wholeheartedly, practically, and also who love our neighbors with sacrificial, life-giving love. Bear fruit in our lives. Help us to grow as spiritual leaders for others who can raise others as disciples of Jesus and shepherds for your flock. Father, I pray that you may bless this um, GLC to the end. Continue to be with each uh, subsequent messenger and subsequent program to reveal Jesus of Mark's gospel and help us to grow as leaders in his image. Give us each one word personally to take home from this conference and to put into practice. Thank you for this time of prayer. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.